I really didn't realize what a success Girl in a Country Song was until probably like last year when I was like, wow, that was huge and really ballsy. Once Girl in a Country Song came out, it came out while we were already on radio tour. Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah, I remember we stayed up on the bus till midnight and downloaded uh -huh. it. And it was just surreal. Every radio station that we went to added it on the spot. We just finished our first radio interview at WCOL in Columbus. And, we got an ad. and you know what? They gave up the ad for a birthday ad for Maddie. First ad ever. <laughs> it felt very Taylor esque. The word was out, the video was getting going, the song was getting on the radio quickly, and it was moving at a pace much quicker than what typically happens within the industry. And I can remember like walking into radio stations in these markets and there would be literally lines out the door and, and little girls you know waiting uh, inside the rooms, tears running down their face and it was it was really special and you just don't see that every day. You're just attracted to them immediately. They're just in, yeah, they're infectious. They're just you want to be around them and it started to get around that they were very talented. They they had great songs and the radio visits started turning into some fan shows. And I remember when we released the music video, Maddie and I were laying in our hotel room on radio tour so we would share a room and just like talk about the day together. And I was on my phone and I kept refreshing it to see how many views the video was getting. And I was like, whoa, 200,000. Maddie, oh my gosh, it's got 200,000. Whoa, it's already at like 500,000. And it hit a million. I have a screenshot of it on my phone as soon as it hit a million. And I think that's probably when it, it felt as big as it was. It came about, I had been talking to Chris Stacy and he had started Dot. He called me and he said, I've got these two girls and I think you are gonna fall in love with them. What was your first impression? <laughs> that they just were going to conquer the world. That there was absolutely no thought in their mind that no was even an option. I was ready to start my career. Now, it was like a rocket and I was holding on for dear life but I was ready to like just keep putting in the work and just follow that crazy rocket wherever it was going. Those girls were truly shot out of a rocket ship. When I officially came on board, they had been doing the radio promo tour for about eight weeks, and it was eight weeks straight, three stations a day. Their work ethic is is like none I've ever seen. I didn't see the inside of my apartment for like three months, I think. I remember. And, and Chris Stacy had to take us to the mall one time because we oh, had no yeah. clothes. Yeah, uh, we had to go buy underwear. <laughs> like we are running low. The reason we had to go to the store is because we tried to wash them in our hotel room sink. <laughs> <laughs> we tried to do like laundry in our in hotel our room. We like washed our stuff and then we like hang them up like with, and had a blow dryer and, we had, and they wouldn't dry in time. So then we finally had to go. <laughs> Wet draws was not going to cut <laughs> yes. it. The Girl in the Country song went to number one in 23 weeks, which is a really short run for a first single number one. It was very fast. I remember being on a lot of planes and doing a lot of interviews. The fact that we won a CMA award. I mean, there was just so many things that were happening that I, I think I was like in survival mode. See you, man. We gotta see you, man. We gotta see you, man. It was the first record we'd launched on Dot Records. It was our very first single. We put it out, and Girl in the Country song is our highest grossing income song to date in, in the eight years of Big Machine Music. So we have 27 or 28 number ones and that has done the best business of any song that we have. Debut, number one, multi-platinum. I mean, it was record setting, and it was a lot of fun. They were being pulled in so many directions. They were young, I mean, very young, 18. It was such a fun first few months, but it was grueling. It was grueling on everyone. We just got really busy. Yeah, really, really fast. tired, and I got really depressed. It was hard for me to constantly, to go from a normal social life to then being thrown into front of people where you kind of have to uh, sell yourself. And I'm not good at that. And I felt at times I was having to pretend to be more outgoing than I was, more bubbly than I was, more smiley than I was, more ditzy than I was 
honestly. From my point of view, they both were rock stars, but I know internally Tay took it a little harder. She's such a private person, and so there was no privacy. I mean, it was, it was all out there. Anything that anyone knew about them was being talked about, and it was, it was not a slow entry into the world. And so the emotional toll that that took, I remember the first time I realized, like, I'm, I'm sad, like, I'm not happy. I had gone to my family reunion, like, in the middle of radio tour. Corona Country Song was climbing to the charts, and it was, like, such an exciting time. And I'd gone to my family reunion, and I remember afterwards, I was like, Dad, like, I think I'm, I think I'm depressed. And he was like, why do you feel that way? And I was like, I was just in a room with my entire family and I felt so like invisible and I felt like I couldn't, I felt like I couldn't be myself and I felt like I was having to, I don't know, put on, put on a facade. I was used to being on the road in front of people, in front of a crowd and um, pretending to be something that when I wasn't around that, I couldn't turn that switch off. And in turn, that was just, you know, exhausting my battery and making me feel very lost. When you're under that much pressure and you have so many eyes on you, you just kind of like put your head down and just focus. But it was weird when I would go home to Sugarland and I'd be like in Kohl's and I'd be shopping and they'd be like, can I have your autograph? And it would scare me. Like kids would be like, hey, can I'm like, oh my gosh, what? And then I'm like, oh yeah. You know, I did start feeling like I have to be Maddie of Maddie and Tay. That was a, you know, pressure. A lot of people are looking at you and they want you to be perfect and they want you to have perfect hair and makeup and awesome outfits and sometimes you're just you got a zit on your face and sometimes you feel like crap. But yeah, it did come with a lot of pressure. I started realizing that there was a lot of eyes on us. I don't think I knew truly the village that it takes, the um, emotional impact that it has and just like how much, how much it takes out of you to constantly be giving yourself away to strangers. And so I don't think I was prepared for that because I didn't, I didn't know that. I saw the glitz and glam of the artists that I loved. And so now I love being in this position because I want to show people it's not all glitz and glam. There's more to it. <laughs>